running in Prusa Slicer, let's use smooth flat top surfaces by running a special second infill phase. Let's look at the feature and its settings in more detail. Ironing is useful when printing models with flat top surfaces, like nameplates, logos or badges. It can also be useful when you want to glue two pieces together and you need the surfaces to be as flat as possible so that the gap between them is minimized. Ironing is not useful for round objects, figures and organic shapes in general. It's also not useful for objects which do have flat areas, but these flat areas are not aligned parallel to the print bed. With that said, ironing will not have a significant negative impact when printing such models, but it will unnecessarily increase the print time. Okay, let's take a look at how we can turn ironing on. First of all, you have to be at least in the advanced mode. Ironing is not available in the simple mode. And we can use, for example, the search function in the top toolbar to look for ironing. Or you can just go into print settings, infill, and you will find ironing here. The checkbox enable ironing or enables ironing for all objects on the build plate. If you want to enable ironing just for one object, uh, we will disable it here. I will right click and let's add a cylinder. And now if we switch into the expert mode, you can right click a model, choose add settings and ironing. Now you can choose which settings you want to customize for this model. I will just uh, tick all of them. And now in the right panel, uh, you can turn on ironing just for this one model. This one has it still disabled and we can, we can set it up here. Uh, if I go back into the advanced mode and into settings, Oh, ironing has basically just two, two settings here. You can either enable or disable it and then the ironing type. All top surfaces, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, essentially every top surface on the model will be ironed if it's flat. If we switch it to topmost surface only, only the very last layer will be ironed. Here you can see the difference. On the right, with topmost surface only, only the white letters were ironed, the black surface was not. Right now there's also an experimental setting called all solid surfaces. We are not yet sure if we're gonna keep it in Prusa Slicer, but basically if it worked as intended, uh, it would iron every layer and it's meant to be used with 100% infill and clear filament to produce uh, basically transparent prints. If you're using an original Prusa printer or a printer that has a profile built in to Prusa Slicer, um, ironing is pretty much just a matter of turning it on and off and maybe rarely you will switch all top surfaces to top topmost surface only. If we switch into the expert mode, we can see two more settings and we will get back to those in a minute. Mm, you will basically only touch these if you're making a profile for a new printer. Ironing works great with monotonic infill, which is another feature that improves the quality of top surface. As you can see, it's already set by default as the infill for top layers in original Prusa profiles. Using modifiers, we can turn on ironing just for a very specific part of a model. Let's say that we wanted to iron the sides, but not the middle of this model. Uh, as we can see, there's difference in height between those faces, so we can use a height range modifier. So if you're in the expert mode, you can right click a model and add height range modifier. If you select it in the right panel, you will see two planes and the modifier applies to everything in between those planes. So let's change the start height to 2, the stop at height to 5. You can experiment with these values until, uh, until they're right. And you can see that the only top surface in between those two planes is now uh, the left and the right side. So now if we right click here, height range modifier in the right panel, we can choose add settings and ironing. Let's just add enable ironing. 
and now we can turn it on in the right panel. If we go into the preview, we can see that the sides have ironing turned on, but the top doesn't. And now let's say that we only wanted to turn on ironing for the right side. So we can use mesh modifiers for that. You could draw a custom shape and use that as a modifier, but let's just use box for the demonstration. So let's choose add modifier, box. And now let's go into the top view and scale this box up. And let's rotate it and move it in place. Now, just like we did with the height range modifier, just right click it in the right panel, choose add settings, ironing. If we now enable it in the right panel and we go into the preview, you can see that only the right side of the model has ironing enabled, the left and the middle does not. The main downside of ironing is the increased print time. If you're printing something big like this, uh, ironing will not play a significant role. Here you can see that 7% of the time was spent on ironing, an hour and 30 minutes from the total of 21 hours. So that's not that big of a difference. But if you're printing something fairly small, or more importantly, not very tall, Ironing can increase the time pretty significantly. Here you can see that 40% of the print time was spent on the ironing. And on the Prusa logo, if we iron every top player, it's even more than that, it's 45%. So keep that in mind uh, when you're thinking about using ironing. If you need to print fast, maybe consider skipping it or enabling it just for the very top player. If you're ironing big surface area, on some machines you might experience heat creep and especially during the summer heat waves even clogged hot end. The extrusion during ironing is just really small and slow. Another thing to consider is that the edges might get a little bit fuzzy. It's really minor and it's pretty hard to show on picture but it is something to, to keep in mind. Let's take a look at how ironing actually works. I have two identical cubes on the build plate, but only the right cube has ironing enabled. If we switch into the preview, we can right away see a difference. The cube on the right has different color of the top surface, and yeah, that's the ironing color. Second of all, we can clearly see a toolpath on the left cube, basically the lines that the nozzle will draw when it's doing the top infill, Whereas on the right cube we cannot really see that, and that's not true, we can, but we have to zoom in really closely because the spacing of the lines is just really small. We can use the slider on the bottom to see what will happen when this top layer is being printed. So if we take a look at the left cube, um, that's pretty normal, it just draws the perimeters first and then it does the monotonic infill. However, for the cube on the right with ironing enabled, the beginning is the same, it draws the perimeters, then it does the monotonic infill, but then in the same layer, at the same height, there's another pass of infill, and that's the ironing. So this has two effects. Uh, first of all, because the nozzle, the hot nozzle, is going over the already printed surface, it kind of flattens any plastic that curled up, so that flattens it and second of all uh, the nozzle is still extruding a little bit so if there were any tiny holes in the top surface um, the nozzle will basically fill them so this will really uh, make the top surface smoother another thing to notice is that the ironing goes even over the perimeters so you can see that there are no perimeters in the in the top layer when ironing is enabled. Well, in a way, th there are, but they are hidden under the ironing. So that's maybe slightly different to how ironing is done in other slicers. If you're calibrating ironing for a printer that does not have a built-in profile in Prusa Slicer, first switch into the expert mode and you will see two additional settings. 
Uh, the flow rate uh, basically sets how much plastic will be uh, extruded in the uh, ironing pass compared to just normal infill. And the second one is the spacing between the ironing lines. So you should set this uh, definitely below the nozzle diameter. Uh, here with 0.4 millimeter nozzle, we have it set to 0.1 millimeter. So overall, the nozzle will go over the same spot about four times. Ironing is very sensitive to the accuracy of the whole extruder system. Too little plastic and shiny grooves will be visible in the top layer, they will not be ironed. Too much plastic and the excess plastic will be dragged by the nozzle to the edges and the top surface. One setting that is not here but it's also important is the ironing speed, which uh, you will find in print settings speed and ironing. So calibrating is pretty much a matter of uh, trial and error. You will have to basically experiment with these values. Last but not least, even the filament can play a role here. So if you're using high quality filament, such as brushament, the consistent diameter will really benefit you here. Ironing is covered in the Brusha Slicer documentation, which you can find at help.brusha3d.com. Happy printing!